Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound with you. Thank you for joining me for this very, very special YouTube video. I'm going to try and make this one a lot shorter. The last one was kind of long. Uh, but it's a special day in that it's July 31st, 2012. And it was 42 years ago on this very day, back in 1970, that the last issuance of British Royal Navy rum was given to their sailors on board their ships. That day, July 31st, 1970, is known as Black Tot Day. Now the tot, if you're unfamiliar with the term, is just a two and a half ounce pour of rum that the sailor received. Now <clears throat> the allowance that sailors were getting of rum stretched back all the way to 1655. Prior to 1655, the sailors were getting beer as their ration. The problem with beer was they'd be out at sea for so long that the beer would spoil, go bad, and now you've got nothing out there to help raise your spirits. So morale was dropping and they were thinking, you know, what can we do to improve that? And one of the newest spirits on the scene was rum. It was being created in great quantities down in the Caribbean. And they thought, you know what, it's very inexpensive. Let's bring that in. We'll give each sailor a half pint twice a day on top of his beer ration. So in case the beer goes bad, he's still got his rum. So that's what they did. And whenever they would do the call uh, on the ship, it was known as up spirits. So it was to help raise the spirits, raise the morale. And again, it did a great job, and that was a wonderful thing. But the problem was, was that the quality of that rum at the time was not very good. Uh, blending had not been in, around. You know, I want to say use the term invented, but just the idea of blending was never even thought of until 1783. And the reason for that was because, again, soldiers, uh, the sailors were complaining. Uh, everybody starts complaining about the quality of the rum. They started mixing it with water and sugar and lime juice just to make it palatable. And they called it grog because the, the Admiral uh, Vernon, he was, he was nicknamed was Old Grog, and he was the one that kind of started instituting that. And the reason for that was because at the time the sailors, some sailors, were holding their rations back and taking it down there to the bunks and just storing it, drinking it all at one time, getting hammered, making for a horrible sailor. So he said, you know what, forget that. What we're going to do is we're going to add one quart of water to your half pint of rum. We're going to add sugar, water, some fresh lime juice, and you're going to have to drink it up here on deck as we're here. So there was no taking it down. And the sailors didn't really care for it, but they called it grog, and that's the term. Now, if you think about the ingredients I just listed, which was water, sugar, uh, lime juice, and rum, that's the base ingredients for a daiquiri. Hence, they almost, you could almost say they created the very first cocktail right there. Uh, but like I said, more importantly, 1783, they hire a man by the name of James Mann to blend the rums, improve the quality. So that's what he did. He brought the rums to him. He nosed them, tasted them, blended them together, came out with good blends. Then he put them in the demijohns. Then they went on the ships. And then everybody's raving about it. And since then, most rums that you know of are all blended, and that's all because of this rum right here. So enough about the history lesson. I think I've named the players. We've got Pussers right here. Uh, we've got Gosling's Family Reserve. This is, you know, the big brother to the Gosling's Black Seal. And we have Mount Gay Tricentennial. So let's get to the nosing and tasting. Of course, we're going to save the best for last. I'm going to start right here, right up front, with the Pussers. hint of raisin along with the molasses on the nose. Just a touch of oak. And maybe a little honey note going on in there as well. And some dark stone fruit, so if you think apricots or plums, that kind of thing going on. It's a touch of spice on there. It pretty much has the flavors just like I nosed. Um, the molasses fills the mouth along with some spices like cinnamon is the predominant one. 
and uh, the molasses, the cinnamon, the vanilla, the stone fruits, okay, and the little hint of honey, the sweetness. It's just very, very mild sweetness. Uh, but it all rolls around together. The heat stays with you. It's not going down to my belly or anything, but it, it is definitely a warmth in the back of the throat. Um, overall, it's very smooth. The raisin note was definitely in there. And definitely, I think for the money, that's a really nice rum, actually, as far as dark rums go. Now we're going to do goslings. Much darker on the nose, on the profile. And what I mean by darker is definitely a more oak, a deeper molasses note. There's definitely a little bit of vanilla in there. And I almost get like a tropical fruit thing going, like a banana. Yeah, that's banana. Sometimes bourbons will give me that banana note, and I'm getting it in that one. So let's go with the taste. Oh, the one thing I didn't mention on this one, the texture. Uh, it wasn't quite really oily. It was um, a medium viscosity, so it wasn't thick, but it wasn't thin. Just right there, medium. Let's see what this one is. Wow, that one's really good. Not as spicy as this one. Uh, the Gosling has more of a vanilla note, and the molasses is, like I said, so deep and rich. You're getting a chocolate in there as well. Maybe just a hint of raspberry on the background. A little spice, not as much as this one. As far as the oiliness, I would give it about a medium level. Pretty good mouthfeel. A little thin on the finish. But overall, very easy to drink. Definitely very big and bold in the mouth. It's almost like the molasses and the vanilla and the spice rolls up very big and bold. And then it just almost, in one breath, just kind of fades away really smoothly as it goes down and then the finish is just just mainly the vanilla and the molasses and the oak anyway very nice Mount Gay Tricentennial take a little extra rinse on that one it's pretty that was pretty big It's got a molasses note for sure, but it's almost got a little bit of the sugar cane. I mean, that's what it's from, but you know, some of them use molasses as a distillate base, and then some use the actual sugar cane juice. And this one, I can definitely get a little of the sugar cane essence going on. There's definitely a darkness to it that reminds me of uh, the tannins of the oak. little plum, definite spice like cinnamon, maybe a hint of nutmeg in there as well. Wow, really complex on the nose. Ooh. So smooth. Um, man, how do you describe that one? It almost... The way it enters is so soft. Uh, the molasses is there, but I still get the feel of more of a sugar cane note than the actual molasses. There's a little warmth on the tongue. Uh, the oiliness is almost maxed out. I don't think I've had this one. It's not quite as oily as this one. 
Uh, it still remains fresh. You're getting the, the uh, red fruits, raspberry, not so much a strawberry, but thinking like a plum as well. And um, a little bit of that warmth just on the back of the tongue. Yep, that's where the spice is, just on the back. But it's by far the smoothest one so far. Um, again, the big player is the plum, the raspberry maybe, uh, the sugar cane, the spice of cinnamon, a little bit of honey in there as well. Wow, that's very impressive. The one that I kind of lean that that reminds me of, and uh, pardon me one second, I'll get it. And I'm back. Ingo Store, 1824. That one reminds me of this one um, it has a very unique flavor so if you ever get a bottle of this or because this one can still be found it's discontinued but every now and then you can find a bottle of it this one has a very similar note a very unique profile but whereas this one's so bold with that uniqueness this one has it but it's much more uh, calm And last but not least, British Royal Navy Imperial Rum. By far the most complex rum that I've ever nosed is this one. It is so big. It just in the nose, it's incredible. It like totally annihilates these other three. It has a uh, deep molasses note. It almost has a smokiness similar to a mezcal. The way mezcal, you know, because they use charcoal to, uh, to smoke and cook the agaves so that charcoal smoke ends up infusing. And it has a similar quality, slight smokiness, sweetness, almost a saltiness like, a, like a, an Isla whiskey would have from the, the, the sea winds. A hint of uh, like a cocoa powder in the background. And then I get like a, a tropical fruit note as well, probably like a guava or a papaya, that type thing going on. It's not a pineapple and it's not a banana. At least 42 years old, still has all the proof to it in the world. Mm, I think it's bottled, what, 95? <laughs> 108.6 proof, very strong. And it's still there, but... The um, viscosity, super rich as far as the oiliness, coats the entire mouth. It almost makes it a little hard to breathe, and it's not the proof. I mean, I've had high proof spirits for years, but it's just the the richness of the flavors of that of that smoke and that molasses and all the uh, the the salt. I still get that salt note going on. It almost reminds me of again of a scotch. The complexity of a scotch, but in a rum with the sweetness. Just incredible is how complex that that rum is. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I know I can't really convey all the nuances that this one has. It's an, almost impossible. Uh, but if you ever get a chance to try it, because there are a few bars that still have it, it may be a little expensive, but it's probably a, a once-in-a-lifetime experience as far as this one's concerned. Again, 
you will not be disappointed with either of these. So if you can run out and get you a Gosling's Family Reserve, it's a little sweeter, but it's definitely uh, a very, very nice rub. So thank you again. Uh, in celebration of Black Tot Day, we did this. Everybody have a great evening. Thank you so much, and cheers.